So let me guess, you have decided to take the plunge to become an artist, a real artist. However, the two words that always seem to come to mind when thinking artists are starving artist. And we don't want to be a starving artist. No, no, no. But you also know that artists got to eat just like everyone else. And so until you get Picasso famous, paying your bills with little doodles is not quite going to cut it. But if you are happy to live modestly and creatively, there is no reason that you cannot live plentifully just like I do with lots of travel and exciting opportunities in your life. Welcome artists, it's Kaylee Bird. I have personally been living my life in a very creative and artistic, focused, centered way for well over a decade now with a lot of my income coming from creative sources. And these are 10 things that I literally live my life by. It has made it possible for me to do all kinds of wonderful things, which if you've been tuning in for a while, I'm sure you've seen that I've lived in Hawaii and traveled to multiple countries. And now I have a van and do van life road trips. I do lots of exciting things all while making art and art videos and teaching art and modeling for art and doing all kinds of art related things. And I just want to share with you literally just some of the ways that I'm doing these things. Now I will preface these things by saying, of course, I am an able bodied, childless, um, unmarried, with no pets. And honestly, I don't have any student debt either. So all of those things have allowed me to live my life very, very um, inexpensively and very, with a lot of fluidity, right? Because I'm not really, <laughs> I have this running joke that I'm like, I'm the most responsible person. You could really count on me, but please don't. <laughs> please refrain from doing so. Um, I, I'm the kind of person that likes to live my life um, very free and unencumbered. So um, I just want to preface this video by saying that those choices that I have made and all of those have been choices um, have definitely contributed to me being able to follow my dream more so as an artist and um, be able to live, you know, a lot more frugally than people who maybe don't have those kinds of circumstances. But regardless of whether or not any or all of those things apply to you, I still have 10 great ways that you can implement how to live not like a starving artist, even if you're not making a ton of income from your art yet. Number one. Now, I think this is really crucial because a lot of people think that as soon as you want to be a real artist, you have to like all of a sudden not have any other jobs. But in fact, I would say don't necessarily quit your day job or if you do, at least maintain a side gig. Like if you really want to start making art a central focus of your life and your career, um, the last thing you should do is start like worrying about if your bills are going to get paid or if you're going to be able to feed yourself because it's really hard to like maintain artistic output if you are stressed about meeting your like basic necessities of life. Okay. I would say a lot of people think the key to jump starting their artistic career is to like quit their job and do hundred percent into that. And I would say it's the opposite. Make sure that you maintain some sort of regular income that you can count on that. You know, your rent and your groceries are paid for. Honestly, that's what I have done for years. Like especially out in Hawaii where it was so expensive. I I worked a coffee job for those entire four years and I even painted decorative surfboards in Waikiki, which I think I have shown that a little bit on this channel, but it was a long time ago. Um, and I made sure that those things paid my rent and my groceries, like nothing else, uh, any other bills or, you know, if I wanted to travel or if I just needed to buy thing, you know, you just have to buy a thing sometimes or gas, all that stuff I had to make for my art. But at least I knew every month my rent. Well, I guess my rent included like my electricity and stuff like that. So like my, my basic living bills and my groceries, I knew it was going to be handled. And even now, I'm a college art teacher and before I moved to Hawaii, I used to do um, regular vending gigs. So I was a crafter vendor and I would teach after school or summer camp, a lot of like small things that would kind of fill in the gaps. Like honestly, usually if you're an artist, <laughs> spoiler alert, you're going to wind up with a lot of irons in the fire. So you don't ever really just like want to wipe your whole slate clean and be like, I'm getting all my income from one source because as an artist, sometimes things ebb and flow. And if you have a lot of irons in the fire, ebb and flow is fine. But if you have like one or two irons in the fire, 
ebb and flow can be like dangerous to your livelihood. And let me tell you, um, it is very hard to put out a lot of creative output if you are literally worried about like your basic standard of living or if you're gonna be able to feed yourself or if your lights are gonna go off or if you're gonna be evicted. So even though you may have to wind up working, you know, a bit more if you're working your 20 or 25 hours a week like side gig to make sure your bills are paid and then you might have to be working a little later in the evenings or after dinner on your artwork or working on a lot of the weekends or that kind of thing but trust me like that is far better than just like every month hoping and praying especially as a new artist that you have made enough sales or that you know you have left people have watched your youtube channel or something just to like barely scrape by it's just not a good way to live Number two, and this is a big one that will save you tons and tons of money, especially if you don't really do it already, this will save you a lot of money. And that is, you need to be cooking at home. You need to be eating at home. All this restaurants, these deliveries, this Grubhub, like the, even the, the Starbucks like on a regular basis, which I know, I know, you don't go to Starbucks, you go to the locally supported coffee shop. And I think that's great that you're supporting local business, but maybe just support them a little bit less because those kind of things things really add up. I mean, I was a barista for years, years, and I would see people easily, my my daily or my five day a week customers, they were dropping like two, $300 a month in there, every month, $300 a month for your coffee and croissant or whatever. Like, that's a lot of money. I mean, I can get all of my groceries for a month for $300, and that was just like their morning coffee budget. So the thing is, is if you really wanna save money, then you need to be cooking at home. And that does two things, okay? Obviously it saves you a lot of money, but also you wind up eating a lot healthier, okay? Because if you're cooking your own food, you know exactly what's going in it and you're serving yourself reasonable portions, okay? Oh, actually it does three things because hello, you're not getting a bunch of takeout and plastic and wasted food, which number three, maybe even should be number one because you know how I feel about waste. Yeah, we'll talk about that one coming up. But seriously, you need to be cooking at home, making your own foods like doing some meal planning like sometimes you can chop vegetables and use that for two or three days like figure out like little routines to make it faster and easier and then I've even got like a number two part two a two for two for two and that is work out at home or in your neighborhood or like in your local park or like my I live in an apartment complex and there's like a gym here and a pool so if I wanted to I could work out like right here um, but working out for one, I mean, there's like a million reasons, but I'm not talking about like strenuous, even if just 20 minutes a day, working out will keep you awake and active. It'll help you start your day. If you're gonna be working on stuff at a desk or an easel all day sitting still, it'll keep you active. It keeps you healthy, right? And then number two, BC, two, three for two, is that that will also save you money because if you're healthy, guess what you're not having to do as much? go to the doctor and guess what's really expensive at least if you live in the US is going to the doctor just in general not being healthy or feeling good because it's not about how you look it's about feeling good and having energy like trust me if you want to be a professional artist you have to have a ton of self-motivation a ton of self-motivation okay so if you are feeling lethargic and not good and unhealthy and like not wanting to move you're probably not going to really feel like focusing on artwork and maybe things that have like long-term payback instead of short-term goals. You know what I mean? Like it's all interlinked. So number two is I know a really big one and they're not all gonna be this long, but number two is kind of like cook at home and like work out at home or in free spaces and like kind of like be healthy in general because those things are going to make you feel better. They're gonna make you more productive and they're also gonna save you a ton of money. Anyways, I know this is a long one, but this one is really important. It has changed my life. It will change yours. So get healthy, eat healthy. Number three, I know this is kind of obvious, but budget your money. Yeah, I know Captain Obvious just came to the party, but you know, they had to come at some point. Um, budget your money, like understand what you are spending every month. Getting an app like Mint Mobile or something, this is not sponsored, but getting some kind of like organizing app or whatever can be extremely enlightening as far as like where you are spending your money. And um, if you download some sort of like money tracking app, or even if you decide to like just, you know, old school paper and pen it, like if you do that for maybe like three or four months, like don't feel like you have to do it forever, but if you heavily track your spending for let's say like 90 days, like three months, 
you will learn so much about yourself and you will understand where like the little five and ten dollar things how they like really add up and where they add up and where like sort of your weaknesses are i guess i should say the impulse buys like and also you will start to understand again if you're going out to dinner or you know driving way too much when you could be like riding or something like that like those kind of things you will really start to see and and just figure out ways that you can cut down, you know, make sure that you are staying within your budget every month. The last, most worst, most awfulest thing you can do, I'm literally making up words because it is this bad, is start taking out credit to like say, oh, I'm going to make a bunch of money on my art career later. So I'll just put everything on credit now and I'll deal with that later. Do not do that. Do not do that because it will take a while um, until you're making a ton of money making art. I'm assuming if you're watching, if you're watching YouTube videos, learning how to be a better artist, I'm assuming that you're not making a ton, ton, ton of money already. So please do not um, bet on your future in that way. Bet on your future in positive, you know, goal filled ways, not um, and like, I'm going to take out a bunch of money on a credit card and eventually I'll be able to pay it back. Okay. You need to live within your budget. And while doing that, um, you know, if you need to be working a little extra to pay down any debt you already have, you know, then be, be working on those kind of things. Cause trust me, it takes a while. It takes a while. A lot of what I've been able to do is because I didn't wind up with student debt. Um, side note, I wound up staying in state for both of my I got an associate's degree, which then I put into my bachelor's degree. So I had two years already done at a free technical college. And then I got my bachelor's degree at called Charleston when I lived in Charleston. So got the in-state tuition, only had to do two years. And then I went to a uh, university of South Carolina in Columbia for my master's degree. Like I don't have the fanciest, you know, RISD and all these like super fancy SCAD degrees. But you know what I also don't have is like a hundred thousand dollars in student debt. I don't have student debt definitely budget when you're taking on things like that think about your choices in the long term do not take out a bunch of credit and debt if you can possibly help it live within your budget now and today and then when you do make money in the future like you'll be able to enjoy it you won't be paying back a bunch of like takeout food or you know a too big apartment or something that's not worth it five years down the line when it also costs you twice as much because of interest right all right number four budget your time, or I guess I should say budget your time, right? This way. Um, yeah. Budget your time. Think about what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to, because yes, I know that as a new artist, you want to say yes to like every opportunity because it's like, Oh my God, somebody's paying attention to me. It wants me to do a thing and actually going to let me put my name on this public thing. Da, da, da. And I'm not saying that's bad. Like I have definitely given art free or um, given my time for free before. And I still would occasionally if the, if like the perfect circumstance comes up or if it's something I just want to volunteer for, cause I believe in it that much. Um, but for the most part, learn when to say yes and learn when to say no, like do not let your time get taken advantage of because even if you say like, well, I'm not making any money just sitting in my studio. I may as well just make this thing for free. Well, guess what? You're not making money sitting in your studio, but you are it's like putting cash in the bank for later. Like you are taking time in your studio to make artwork or to do a social media post or to get in touch with a potential client or whatever it is. So even if you're not making a dollar that day, you are spending that free time building a business rather than giving away that free time for free for somebody, because there is a little secret secret that you should know as a beginning artist. And that is that if you give away your time for free, that makes your time worthless in some people's eyes. Do you get it? Because there's, you didn't put a price on it. This, my time here it is, it's worth nothing. So they're like, Oh, thanks for, thanks for your worthless time. I'll just take as much of it as I can because it's not worth anything to you. They literally like not everyone people will really perceive your, your time as worthless. If you do not put a price on it, if you don't put a worth on it. So just make sure that, um, and even if something is paid, make sure that you're getting paid adequately. Like I got over one or two gigs when I was young, I, I took on a sign painting gig that wound up taking me like four days. And I think I got paid $60 for it or something like there are certain, you know, I just didn't know. I don't paint signs. I was young. I, like, so just be careful, right? When you say, when you say yes to things, even paid things, but especially free things that you are budgeting your time and saying, okay, 
I will give this amount of time, but I have to have this amount of time in my studio in order to be creative, right? Because that time is not free. Also, also, real quick, that also means for people calling or texting you all the time, okay? Because just because you're in your studio at your house doesn't mean that you sh it's just phone call, text time. Like, budgeting your time also means telling friends, letting friends know, like, I'm at, I'm at home, but I'm at work right now. You know, so I'll get back to you or even setting your thing on silent or whatever, making sure people understand, like I am budgeting this four hours of studio time in my own headspace and I'm not taking any messages or calls, right? So budget your time. Trust me, you will thank me for that one later. Okay, we are on a roll. Now, number five is use your supplies wisely, right? Do not waste your art supplies. Pay attention to how much oil you are squeezing out on the palette. Get a few pencil extenders so that all of your pencils will last a lot longer. Pay attention to if you're cutting off a ton of paper on the outside of a drawing and use a smaller pad. Make sure you are cleaning your paintbrushes really, really well so that they last longer. And reuse what you have and like sometimes you can just go find stuff for free. So when I was younger, I cannot tell you how many times I painted and repainted over canvases. Like I would sometimes have five or six paintings on a canvas by the time I was done with it. And you know, you just paint something, maybe you turn it in for class, you don't really like it. I always snapped a photo, even if I didn't like it, just to have a record, snap a photo of it and then just put some gesso on it and there you go, a whole new canvas again. And let it be known that you are an artist that is accepting art supplies. I where people will always give you stuff like your parents, friends, and things like that. They're always like, oh, I don't use this anymore. I have my old watercolor set or whatever. And be like, yeah, hell yeah, take that on. You know, do whatever you can. Be creative. Like, you would be surprised how much you can find, like, at a hardware store, or even at, like, a Habitat for Humanity or a thrift store. Oh my gosh, I have, like, that's where I get all my frames. Sometimes you'll even find canvases you can paint over at a thrift store. And as far as free stuff goes, like, pay attention to your local college because back when I was in college and actually even at the college that I'm working at now at the end of the semester there are so many supplies that people just like dump sometimes they'll leave it like in the back of the art rooms or sometimes they'll put it like out in the dumpster like I remember back in Charleston at College of Charleston there would literally be a dumpster behind the huge art building and there was like piles of canvases and half used paint and like me going there and a bunch of my friends who didn't even go there, we would go like day after day and get all this free stuff. Unbelievable amount of supplies that students were like, well, I took one semester and I'm never gonna use that again. And they'll just dump it. And now number six is no frivolous purchases, okay? Even if they're cheap, even if you're at the thrift store and it's like, oh, it's only $2, that's still $2, okay? And that still takes up real estate in your house. One of the biggest things that I see both with like, students that I've had, friends that I've had, and clients, definitely clients that I've had. One of the biggest unfortunate things that I see is that artists love to collect art supplies and that's all fine and good if you're making a ton of art, but if you're not using them, then it's just a bunch of plastic and stuff and potentially even chemicals or whatever, pigments like that are not going to get used and might eventually just get dumped or trashed or like even still it's like a waste of money and wherever you're living, like you're paying for every square inch like of stuff you have constantly, whether it's a mortgage or rent, or even if it's just heating and air conditioning that space of your house to make sure your stuff doesn't rot, or gosh forbid you have like a storage unit sitting full of stuff you're not using. Like, trust me, you don't want to have frivolous purchases because for one, it's a waste of money, right? And a waste of resources. And the whole thing is to not be starving because you're not wasting money on stuff you don't use. And also too, it's like clutter. It's stuff that you have to deal with and move and shift around and work around and all that. When if you're trying to be creative, you want a clean, clear, organized space. So you have a clean, clear, organized head and thought process to make artwork. So trust me, frivolous purchases are bad for the wallet. They are bad for the psyche. They are very, very bad for the environment. Like I, I, I used to do this kind of thing. And I finally made a rule and I have it with my art studio, especially moving to Hawaii and living in a tiny hell's house. But I have a rule that I'm not allowed to buy a new art supply until I am replacing that supply. Now I did get into gouache, so I was allowed to buy some gouache that was like a new thing. Um, but other than that, like unless I'm doing a new thing that I am certain that I will stick with, 
you know, um, I'm not allowed, my, me, I am not allowed to bring a new art supply into the nest unless I am replacing something that is all used up. So it's a really good rule of thumb and I just, just don't, no frivolous purchases. I mean, really in life in general, it's a good rule of thumb, but we'll stick with art supplies for today, but really for everything. All right, number seven, um, I hate to say it, but you need to check what your subscriptions are because I guarantee you there's at least one or two that you don't even remember that you have. Um, you need to be very mindful of your subscriptions because so often a subscription is pretty inexpensive and you don't really think about it and you're like, ah, sure, I can afford an extra $8 this month or whatever it is. But them, them $8, they add up, okay? At the end of the month, the end of the year, you could be spending like hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars in subscriptions and I'm just talking about digital things like Hulu and Netflix and all that kind of stuff like I personally have like one podcast that I subscribe to just because I love them so much I believe in them and then I have Netflix and that's it you know I watch things on YouTube and that kind of thing. oh Spotify you know like personally like those are my subscriptions those are the things that I'm like this is core these are my favorites like I spend you know under $25 a month and that's it and what you also don't want to do is make sure that you are not subscribing to like art boxes and stuff like that like I know the unboxing videos and getting something in the mail and all that is like really fun and exciting but talk about talk about no frivolous purchases like go back to number six if you need to listen to that again but literally getting a box of stuff you don't even know what it is just like bought on your credit card and mailed to you every month, like the likelihood that you are going to like and actually use every single thing in that box is so slim. You know, it's just, it's, it, it's not, it's not good for you. It's not good for the clutter in your house. It is not good for the planet, right? Like none of that. Just, you need to really par down and decide what are my most core subscriptions have a dollar amount you know like I kind of feel comfortable like I said around $25 a month I'm like I'm good with that and if I wanted to change it out at some point I could change it out maybe I watch everything on Netflix and I go sign up for Hulu for a year and then I switch back like whatever like I know for me too I don't need to have that much TV in my life like it's not good for you you know so you really need to check your subscriptions don't be subscribing to art boxes or anything else like that and um, you know par down just par down what you can you'd be surprised how much little bits add up oh I almost forgot to mention, duh, this amazing free resource that we pretty much all have are libraries. Like cut down your subscription and start heading over to the library because you can rent a ton of like DVDs and stuff. I know you may not have a DVD player, but go to the th thrift store. I guarantee you, you'll be able to find a DVD player to hook up to your computer because everybody's gotten rid of them. So go there, rent a DVD, you know, why not? Go there, rent some books. Oh my gosh. Just side note, library is a great place to go as an alternative to a coffee shop at most libraries. And I've gone to a lot of them like as I travel cross country um a lot of libraries you're allowed to eat and drink in so I will bring my hot little canteen with a good lid you know of hot tea and my computer and my laptop and I'll go in there for two hours I will treat my library like a Starbucks um so as you are cutting down subscription and cutting down costs don't forget to use this wonderful wonderful resource I'm telling you your local library is like an awesome awesome place to to hang out and there's like a lot more going on than you would think I've been nicely surprised these last few years going to a lot of libraries and see that they've really become these amazing, clean, bright, safe, like community resource places where you just always feel invited and like nobody expects you to go spend any money. It's really nice. And number eight is check out your local like free events and art galleries and art openings and maybe think about supporting your local art museum with a membership that you can then use all year long to go for free. I am one who firmly believes that there is a lot of cool stuff like basically everywhere. If you just look around, there is cool stuff to do within like 30 minutes of basically everywhere in this country. We are very, very lucky in America to have a lot of people doing a lot of cool stuff and look around for free local events. There's always like street fairs you can go to that'll have like music and you know, vendors, even if you're not buying stuff, just checking stuff out. Like there's always like cultural events. I remember being in Hawaii, there's all these amazing multicultural events. You can go and literally see like dances from different cultures, try some different food, you know, maybe like one thing, right? Not spending all your money, but like supporting like a vendor or whatever here or there is nice. Like there's a lot of really, really affordable things. And oh my gosh, art openings, like dude, Dude, I cannot wait till things are like really fully back on after the pandemic. I miss doing the art crawls and stuff on like the first Friday of the month. There is so much stuff, not to mention 
Check out what your outdoor features are. Where do people go hiking? Where do people go walking? Is there a greenway? Like, is there some place to camp within 30 minutes? Like, there are so many cool things that you can do that cost little to no money within your own town. I promise. And once you like, you know, look in your, I was about to say look in the newspaper, but like look on some town forums or something like that. You might have to like crawl on Facebook or something to find out what's going on. But once you start going to a few events, you'll get in like the, the sphere and you'll start learning and seeing new, th new things. You'll probably wind up seeing a lot of other really interesting, inspiring things and meeting a lot of other really cool, creative people. Like it's really nice to feel like you're part of the community because you're like out at that community's events. And sometimes if there's an event that's like really expensive that you really want to go to, you might even be able to volunteer. Like you could be like a docent at like some exclusive, I don't know, art event or like a symphony or a theater, that kind of thing. Especially if there's like a traveling art exhibit coming to town that costs like $25 at your local, you know, art space. You can volunteer and go see that kind of stuff for free. Like you can help out a little bit and then get probably free tickets as well. So definitely I have volunteered at numerous events. I volunteered with galleries before just because I was like, hey, I just want to get to know you guys and I just want to be part of this thing. And like people love it. And then once again, you'll probably wind up getting invited to do other cool stuff. So if you put yourself out there and really kind of figure out what's going on in town, you can find all kinds of cool events that cost little to no money. All right, number nine, we are getting there. Number nine is probably one of my favorites and that is learn to barter and trade. I cannot tell you, cannot tell you how many a beautiful artworks and artifacts, <laughs> I will call them, I have in my house that I have bartered and traded for with other artists. Especially like when the holidays come around, like I have traded my own artistic wares for other people's artistic wares and they gave mine as gifts and I gave theirs as gifts. Like, it's amazing, oh my gosh. Back when I was like a regular craft vendor, I straight up did not have to purchase soap with money for like four years. I was able to trade my wares for amazing handmade soap at so many craft fairs and stuff that I literally, it was like four years of like gourmet soaps all traded. I'm telling you guys, bartering, bartering, bartering is the way. I mean, you can barter for services, you can barter for food, maybe even like local restaurants. Maybe they need some artwork on the wall and you're like, hey, I'll do a painting for like 10 meals at your restaurant or something like that. Like definitely, and honestly, Bartering is good for both people, like, because it costs you less to make a thing than it does to pay for that thing, right? Like, there's plenty of artists that can't afford their own artwork. I can't afford my own artwork. I'm not walking around buying thousand dollar paintings, right? Like, I don't have that kind of money. Um, so it really benefits you as the giver as well as the receiver because they're also like, hey, this costs me a lot less than it would cost to go buy that person's thing. So don't feel weird. I mean, once you have developed a certain level of like, I don't want to say professionalism to scare you off, but once your artwork is like not completely practice, right? As long as you're kind of getting somewhere a little bit on your art skills, like it's time. It's time to start bartering because there are plenty of people that you know, creative people that love to support the other creatives that can't necessarily afford it. So this is a wonderful, wonderful way. So definitely learn to barter, especially if you're doing like craft fairs and craft events. Oh my gosh, I would get like all of my Christmas stuff taken care of just by swapping goods. It's great. And number 10 is literally the most important one of all. It really is. And it's going to sound hokey and cheesy, but I'm sorry. It just is. And that is you need to have a positive mindset. Like you need to not think like, oh, I'm going without, I wish I had the new fancy thing and the brand label, this and that. Like you need to not think that those things are important. Like having the latest tech and having some paying someone to sport their label. I'm sorry, but <laughs> if Gucci wants me to wear their label, they better pay me to advertise on my body. Like that's how I feel about that kind of thing. Um, so you need to have a positive mindset and be happy to live within your means. Like I love making my own clothes and you know, not going to a salon and supporting the makeup industry and that kind of thing. Like I love living like that. I love cooking. I love working out at home. Like I love making my Christmas presents. Like, and if I didn't like those things, I would feel poor to use a bad word. You know what I mean? I would because I don't have money for those things, but I don't want those things. I don't, I don't want that 
fancy crap bowl. I don't want to look like an expensive person. I like to look homemade and homegrown and I like to make my own and do my own and be self-supportive uh, as in like fixing things instead of buying them or I love to buy used because I feel like it's less resources. So I am literally thrilled to shop at a thrift store and buy used electronics and stuff like that. So a big part of not being a starving artist is having the right mindset saying, oh, I'm not sad that I don't get to buy the new tech. I'm happy that I don't need to buy the new tech. I got this phone for half price and I don't have to go buy that stuff because I don't need it. Like, you know, that, that I would say is the biggest part to being an artist is, is finding that happiness because not only will you then be like, heck yeah, there's another ground score which is like my catchphrase, um, but you will literally feel fulfilled in all of the small things. You just kind of have to decide where do you want to be in this life? What do you want to make you happy? And you have to live by that mindset and you will be pleasantly surprised. I think if you make the decision to happily live frugally and happily try to find inexpensive solutions and happily fix a thing that breaks instead of buying new, then you're never going to be a starving artist, right? You're just going to be somebody who is living by what they believe in and, and figuring it out in this crazy world and making it work. Okay. So hopefully that was inspiring for you. I know I definitely threw in quite a bit of my own experiences, but sometimes I feel like, you know, having that story of the journey can really help you sort of understand that I'm not just spouting these things. This is literally how I live. So hopefully you feel super inspired to live frugally yet plentifully check out this playlist because I have a lot of other videos on just tips on how to run your own small art business and do it well and do it inexpensively. Thanks so much for being here guys. I'll see you next time.